anyway, the person that uh, was responsible for pulling the trigger, so, so to speak, was President Harry Truman. And he was famous for giving him hell. And boy, did he give him hell here. I'm not speaking for it. I'm not speaking against it. It's uh, just a fact of war. Photography is an amazing thing in conveying what happened in history. This is one of those. A city destroyed. I am now incredibly close to the atomic bomb dome. I can just about touch it. Yeah, I can touch it. There, I touched it. That someday it would serve as the bullseye for a new kind of bomb. There's the bomb. Let's end it with the bomb. gaiety of uh, my encounter with the businessman, my gaze, my gaze lifts to find uh, a sight that we have all seen in textbooks. There it is, this famous atomic bomb dome, that famous structure that on that day of August 6, 1945 would not succumb to the atomic bomb. It was all that was left in this area here where 2,000, 200,000 people died on that fateful day. So I'm very happy that I came down here this evening yet to to see this. I'll come back tomorrow for a detailed look. But there it is. In peaceful cosmopolitan Hiroshima. The uh, unanswerable question, of course, is How could this uh, structure have uh, withstood that blast that destroyed everything? To stand uh, to this very day and probably for a long time to come as the symbol of that dropping of the first atomic bomb during wartime. A dramatic photo uh, taken after August the 6th, 1945. And uh, it shows what is now the atomic bomb dome. That's the building that survived near Ground Zero, right there. That building is just to my right. This is the back of it. I was here last evening and saw it uh, all lit up. It was quite dramatic, even more so than it is now. The view from the back is made interesting by the giant tree. It gives it almost a spooky eerie effect. Some more dramatic scenes.
And finally, there's the bomb. There's the bomb. There's a steady stream of uh, visitors. Uh, with you. I mean, this is like cars. It is volume. I've been waiting to take a video of that uh, information board. To, uh, not much success. Always people standing around. Here's a photo of the, the original building, the Hiroshima Perfect Prefectural Commercial Exhibition Hall. This was the photo after the hall after the, the bombing. This was the first preservation project. At the time, there was a large debate as to whether they should keep it standing or tear it down as an eyesore. The side that uh, for for preservation obviously went out. And here's the aerial photo from the west. This is a model of the Peace Memorial Park where I'm presently located in that building, second floor. Can you hear that haunting music they play over and over again? And here's the view down to the first floor as you come in. And the exhibits outlining Japanese military history. But I particularly keyed in on the period of the Second World War right over there. There didn't seem to be much about what Japan did in Asia and elsewhere. This is the corner that draws the most attention right, right here. When I was down there, there was a huge crowd down there. This is the corner that explains why the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. a model of the beautiful point, excuse the pun, in Hiroshima where they decided to drop the bomb from the B-29 bomber. Right about there. Half a mile above, the bomb exploded, creating a huge, huge fireball. I'm struck by the physical beauty of this particular place, not only of the model, but having walked around it. it shows that life goes on, and in this in Hiroshima in a beautiful way, which it certainly was not in 1945. This was a garrison town with a strong military contingent. And the Americans had their reason, I guess, for choosing it. From this to 
this in a manner of seconds perhaps a few minutes at the most dramatic changes come quickly and this was the most dramatic of the 20th century Hiroshima in ruins in a dramatic, dramatic photograph. Photography is an amazing thing in conveying what happened in history. This is one of those. A city destroyed. on August the 6th, 1945, to be followed by another city destroyed south of here, the city of Nagasaki, on August the 9th, 1945. From the uh, videos uh, around me, uh, I've learned that uh, Hiroshima was picked as the target because it apparently had uh, no POW, prisoners of war camps. The other three targets which were selected did have prisoner of war camps. So that would say is the main reason. And as fate would, would have it, this T-shaped bridge, that T-shaped bridge right there, target right there that's what the Eola Gay I believe the Eola Gay was the name of the B-29 bomber that dropped the bomb was aiming for the T-shaped bridge it's uh, fair to say that the designers of this beautiful T-bridge when's the last time you saw a T-bridge I had no idea that someday it would serve as the bullseye for a new kind of bomb that would result in Hiroshima looking like that. This is a really interesting perspective from the main memorial hall. You see the fountains uh, underneath. Just follow the line to where I'm standing. Turn around and look this way. The arch, the flowers, the eternal flame. There's always an eternal flame wherever there are places of importance, places of memorial. There's an eternal flame. And I think, for instance, of Arlington Cemetery, there's an eternal flame. In front of the Parliament Building in Ottawa, there's an eternal flame. But look where this view ends. It's right on the atomic bomb dome. Well done as far as the memorial is concerned. <laughs> the young couple uh, sitting uh, in front of me um, is uh, a reminder of a uh, fact of life that uh, no matter what the size of a tragedy, life goes on. life goes on, as it did here. 
they say that um, there were trees uh, that uh, here in Hiroshima that a year after the uh, bomb was uh, dropped were blooming again. Hard to believe. A plaque behind me indicates that the atomic bomb exploded 580 feet above the dome and 160 meters to the southeast. Looking at my compass, southeast would put it in that direction. The building was uh, built in uh, 1915 and it was the industrial promotion building for Hiroshima. It was designed by a Czech uh, architect and it's a uh, distinguishing green dome was a landmark and favorite of uh, people of Hiroshima. I am now incredibly close to the atomic bomb dome. I can just about touch it. Yeah, I can touch it. There, I've touched it. But this one, this one is in Memorial Hall. It's a replica. Yikes. I'm backing into exhibits. The walls are lined with explanatory panels showing the recovery. It's all very well done. I was looking for it but did not find any great detail about Japanese destruction during World War II, meaning what did Japan do to Asia? What did Japan do to the United States? Not too much mention of that. As I stand on the uh, bridge uh, nearest uh, the atomic bomb dome, I have to reflect upon the fact that uh, why was this bomb dropped on Japan? Why was it not dropped on Germany? I pose that question because I was born in Germany. I was born in 1943. The war ended in 1945. In Canada, we celebrate Remembrance Day, I believe, on November the 14th. So the, the war in that theater ended on November the 14th. Uh, 1945 this bomb was dropped this bomb was dropped on August the 6th 1945 so it could potentially have still been dropped on on Germany so why was it dropped here some reasons that come to to mind is uh, well obviously it was dropped to bring an end to the to the war against uh, Japan which it, it achieved but also there must have been a, an element of um, revenge for Pearl Harbor. And um, the other aspect that enters into, into it is, uh, was it dropped here as opposed to Germany uh, because it was the Asiatic race versus the Caucasian race? I don't know, but those are all factors which probably had a part in, in the politics. Anyway, the person that uh, was responsible for pulling the trigger, so, so to speak, was President Harry Truman. And he was famous for giving him hell. And boy, did he give him hell here. I'm not speaking for it. I'm not speaking against it. It's uh, just a fact of war. At the time that the bomb was dropped, a quick glance at my watch reveals no there's no such melodramatics here that's not the time the bomb was dropped that is Seiko Japanese standard time it is eight minutes after seven and uh, look at that the clock tower in front of the museum that I videoed last night may not show the time when the atomic bomb was dropped. But this watch apparently does.
Pretty view of uh, Hiroshima from the bridge leading to the Memorial Hall. By the way, I've been uh, carrying around some uh, garbage for my lunch for over half an hour now. Garbage bins are hard to find in Japan. It's the cleanest place, so you'd think there'd be garbage bins on every street corner. That's not the case. You just can't find them. I went into two washrooms uh, thinking for sure I could get rid of my, uh, my garbage. No way. The washrooms don't have garbage bins. Japan, you take responsibility for your own garbage. I'm just not quite sure what they do with it. I'm just not quite sure what they do with it. Reflections.